Welcome back to Bob's Magic Emporium. It's time for another all new Magician 101, the show for all magicians. We got a lot of great questions this week. Before we jump into the questions, two things. One, uh, you're probably wondering what this is. This is my, I just dropped that off, we thought of a minute. This is my picture that Chris Ballinger drew of Bob's Magic Emporium. I actually made a video of this, so you can go check this out. It was it posted it on Monday. It's called a super cool Chris Ballinger item. So go check out the video of this if you haven't seen it yet. I got a frame for it, so it's going to be sitting up here on my magic shop. We're going to place that right there. That's perfect. Place that there. And uh, so also, the other thing I want to talk about is make sure to check out the rules. The Digital Magician Contest is online right now. You can go check out the rules for the contest and uh, you can try to make your videos. Uh, get your videos in because we want to have we have at least eight people for the contest to actually happen. We need at least eight people. So get your videos in. You still have a lot of time to get those videos in though so don't feel like you have to be rushed to get them in. Alright, now remember to post your questions down below for next week. I'll give them an answer. The Magician PR has the first question. Do you have some kind of sound system for your show? If you do, can you give give can you give me can, can you give a link to it? I'll get that right eventually. Can you give a link to it? I will not give a link to it. The reason being, I don't use a sound system in my show. Um, some magicians do. I don't um, because I feel like it's another thing you have to lug around with you when you uh, perform, especially. And, and and if you're doing like a kid's birthday party, you're gonna be in someone's house. You're gonna have enough sound in there anyways. You're not gonna be like. 500 feet from the audience where they can't hear you. And when I perform street magic, I just use, as I say in kindergarten, your outdoor voice. I just use my outdoor voice and I kind of project a little more vocally. Um, another really good thing if you can do it, which I can't do it when I do my street magic like on Ocean City, on the Ocean City Boardwalk, but try to find a storefront, which also helps a closed down storefront. One that's not open, one that's not, not, one that's closed for good. And stand in the archway. That really helps project your voice, too. If you're having trouble, uh, like in street magic, projecting your voice. Try to find a closed-down business and project your voice by standing in the entranceway. Most times, you can't stand in the entranceway of um, businesses because they don't like that. Uh, but on the Boardwalk of Richmond City, there's designated spots you can perform at, and you can't perform in front of the storefront. So uh, I just use my outdoor voice to kind of project and also stand away from the traffic. So if the traffic is in front of you here, so your audience is basically standing where the camera is, and there's traffic behind them, they're not going to be able to hear you. If the traffic's behind you, then the traffic noise is you. They're not going to. They're going to hear you because the sound's going to go straight to them and not hear traffic noise behind them. So that's another great tip too. If you're having trouble with street magic, uh, projecting your voice to get people to hear you. All right, uh, but also I've also used a sound system once in my show. It was an in-house sound system when I did uh, performance at a restaurant. It was an open wand night, and they had a big stage, and had a couple magicians go come on and perform. It was a lot of fun, but they had an in-house sound system which I used there because it was kind of hard to hear me. But normally I do do uh, don't use sound systems. All right, slight to magic has the next question. Thanks. What is the best trick to buy at Magic Geek? All right, I'm gonna go over a few of my favorites. These are the ones that I get the most joy performing in when I do a uh, show. First one is Chris Ballinger's Forced Outcome. That's a really fun trick. I love that one. That's where, uh, that's my contest winning video that won the Magic Geek contest. Go check out that video um, on my channel. It's the Magical Mondays video where I did it. A lot of fun to perform. It's an instant download and it's $4.99 on Magic Geek. So it is a steal of a, a bargain for that trick. Uh, I would pay like 12 or 13 bucks for that trick. It's that good. So go check that out. Another good one at Magic Geek. They're out of stock right now, but it's the Mad Sponges. It's a really great trick. I love that. The audience loves it, especially when you start pulling out these characters from a game they know, and they're just like, ah, oh! and they get all crazy when they see like the red bird come out of the screen and the green pig. They just get all excited. Another good one is My Pet Boris Magic Spider. That's where you have the spider crawl around your cell phone screen, and then uh, you wave your hand to get the spider back. You say, you can do it too. Wave your hand. They wave their hand. There's a big spider on the back of their hand. They freak out. They kirk out. It's a lot of fun. I love the trick. And uh, one more uh, that I really like is Crosswords by Mark Mason. That's a really fun one where you have the cards that say yours and mine. You do a variation of Doc Daly's last card trick. At the end of the trick, you turn over one of your cards so they can see it says mine on both sides. You give it a shake, and then, hello, friend. Uh, there's a bird out on the window there. Uh, hello, bird. And uh, then uh, you give it a shake, and then the uh, cards change from mine to yours. Really, really cool. Oh, and Flash by Chad Long. That's really cool, too, the, the trick with the USB drives. All right. Mr. Tadpole221 says, 
when you performed your magic at the farmer's market, what kind of tricks did you perform primarily? Thanks again with our big smiley face, which I think that's really cool. How did you get that on YouTube? That is really cool. How did you get that? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I want to know. That's really cool. All right. Uh, the, well, first of all, I do want to say that I got confirmation that I will be back at the farmer's market again for 2014. I'm really, really excited. So I can't wait to go do my magic every week at the farmer's market on Saturdays. But uh, the tricks I normally did, I didn't quite do my my street show. So it wasn't my street show. I didn't do like the traditional lineup I have for the street show. But I didn't do my uh, close-up show either. So it's kind of a variation in between there, my street show and my close-up show. So both shows kind of intertwined and interweaved to make it one big show. So, but mostly in my in that show, I kind of did a couple card tricks. I did um, part of Chris Ballinger's Friday Night, did the Professor Nightmares part, where the ropes are all different sizes, you make them all the same size, then back to different sizes. Um, I did uh, some other tricks like the Celebrity Smart Butt Deck, I did Dirty Pool with the pool ball where it comes out. And so I did a couple tricks, I also did Mad Sponges too, great thing to perform as Mad Sponges. So I did uh, kind of, you know, just some random, but mostly I did card tricks, it was kind of a big thing that I did, and some other cool things as well. So, um, yeah, and I believe, Mr. Tadpole, I can't remember if it was you or if it was somebody else, but I'm going to go with you. You asked, a, in a, like, a Magician 101 a long time ago, you said, can we see your street show? Well, I said, yes, you can at a later point because I was reworking my street show, and I think I finally got it down to where I like it. So very, very soon for Magical Mondays, I'm going to film my entire street show, and I'll show you guys my entire street magic show that I do. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be coming very, very soon. Um, not Probably not this Monday, maybe the next one. So we'll see what happens. All right. And uh, BX Shep, or Brendan Shepard, wants to know, what are some good heckler tricks? Meaning, what are good for if a heckler tries to mess you up and they do? What are some good tricks to either make a heckler think they have messed you up, but then you amaze them, or a trick that they can't really mess up on? Okay. Um, what Now, I don't really do heckler tricks, like ones that hecklers can't mess up on. What I will normally do, I'll give you my advice. Um, there are tricks out there I'm sure you can do that hecklers won't mess you up on. But what I normally do with a heckler is I'll stop the show. And a lot of times, I'll, if there's a heckler, I'll stop the show and I'll say, I'll, I'll finish up the trick that I'm doing and say, thank you guys so much. That was my show and I will end the show right there. Uh, some magicians will say, keep the show going because hecklers can make you funny if you play up to them. I don't do that because that's a very rare instance you can make a heckler funny because they're trying to bring your show down or they're trying to get you flustered and nervous. So normally I'll just end the show and I'll say, thank you guys, that's my show. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if I'm doing a street show, I'll say, make sure to throw some money in the hat if you enjoyed the show. And I'll do my pitch for tips just like I would if it was the end of my show. I'll do my funny uh, stock lines to throw money in the hat and then I'll move on and I'll wait for the heckler to leave. I mean, normally that's what I'll do. A lot of times, though, some uh, most of the times magicians say a heckler just wants to be involved in the trick. They want to hold a prop. They want to pick a card or touch a prop or something like that. So you could get away with just having to do a card trick for them and have them help out a lot in the trick. Have them touch all the props in the trick. Find a card trick that's really, really good where they can hold the cards the entire time or something like that. But normally, like I say, I'll just be like, all right, that's it, I'm done, and then that's the end of my show, and I'll let it be, let the heckler walk away, then I'll try to draw a crowd again. And it works, it works. That, and that way, also, if you, because your audience can tell if you're getting flustered by the heckler, and it's going to make for an even worse show because you are now getting flustered. So if you can just cut the show off right there, end the show, then it's going to help you a lot when you actually... It helps your audience to know, okay, this guy's not going to get flustered by that heckler. He did a really good job. And a lot of times, too, I've had a couple of instances where there's been people, because when you perform out on the street, you'll get all kinds of people, people who are really nice, people who are really mean, people who are intoxicated. And I've got a couple of intoxicated people who've tried to bring the show down. So I'll normally stop, and most people come up and, uh, I've had a couple people come up to me after the show and say, that was a really good job the way you handled that drunk guy. And, you know, so... It, 
audiences can tell if you handle hecklers good or if you ha heckler or he handle a heckler badly, they're going to be able to tell. And a lot of times I'll come up and say, you handle that guy very, very well. And I actually had one dude actually come up to me on the Ocean City Boardwalk and was like, I'll st are you going to do another show soon? I'll stick around for it because, you know, I want to see what else you have. Sorry about that guy ruining your show. So it does help. It does help. So that's what I would say. But a lot of times magicians say hecklers, magicians just want to say hecklers want to get involved in the trick. So try to try to do that. But normally I just cut them off. All right. Jay Brothman becomes the final question as always. Hey, mate, what do you think of PK ring? PK ring is, I can't go into the secret, but I don't use any PK ring. So I'm not going to review it because there's, Tons of PK rings out there on the market. It seems like each magic uh, person comes out with their own PK ring to do what they need it to do. So I'm not going to review it because I don't use one. But it is a really good, it's a classic of magic, and a lot of magicians do use a PK ring. And it's it, and magicians who do love their PK rings. So a lot of them can't live without a PK ring. So, you know, I don't use it, but some people do. Uh, so I would say it's definitely worth it thinking about getting one because I hear nothing but good things about it, but I will never wear it because I'm not a ring wearer. So that's the only bad thing. I don't wear rings, and I never will wear a ring probably, so it's weird to have because it, it seems foreign to me to wear a ring too because I never wear it. It's like when I forget my watch when I leave the house, I feel like something's missing. So if I wore a ring, I feel like something is just not right with me, so I would never wear a PK ring. Uh, he also wants to know, uh, what do you think of a hot rod yeah, do you have one? I do have a hot rod. I have two different size ones, actually. I only have my small one here because I keep this one in my cabinet down here. But this is one made by tricksandwands.com. And uh, it's a really nice, it's handmade. It's wooden. The dots are all painted on there. But anyways, the hot rod trick is we have the spectator choose a dot. You can show that the hot rod is the same on both sides. They choose a dot. And then you can make it change into whatever color they choose. And then you can show it on both sides to be all the dots are the same color. Really cool trick. I love it. Um, I don't usually perform this too much, uh, like for a street show, but I will carry this around uh, when I do like close up. If there's like little kids, they really get a good kick out of this. They really like it. But adults, not so much, but little kids like it. And they do come in different sizes. They have close up versions. They also have some big ones that I've seen that you can use with like uh, for like birthday parties and things. They're like a, it's like a magic wand. It's about you know, it's about, you know, it's pretty long, and then you can do the hot rod trick with it as well. It's really cool. So I recommend picking a hot rod up because it's a really great trick. So check out different magic websites because each one sells different hot rods, different shapes and colors and variations and that kind of thing. All right. And he wants to know, what do you think about Extreme Burn by Richard Sanders? I have Extreme Burn 2.0. I actually have it. I practiced it a couple times. Well, not a couple, but I practiced it. I could never get it to look smooth. I could never get the switch of the bills to look smooth. By the way, if you don't know what Extreme Burn is, $1 bills change into $100 bills. Or you can make them change into 10s or 50s or whatever. But anyways, um, you make the bills switch. It's really, really cool looking. But the only thing with the trick is I can never get it to look smooth, so I put it away. Maybe I'll break it back out soon and try to start practicing it. But it's a really great trick for street magic because you can um, you know, show the dollars. People know what dollar bills are. I think you can use foreign currencies too. And uh, you, you show the money, and then you make it switch to another uh, another denomination. Really, really cool trick. I love it when I see people do it. Like I, I saw some guy do it at a magic show two or three months ago, and it was really, really cool. Um, he did it and he talked about how, you know, he tries to, so I think, I think his pattern was providing for his family and then boom, he switched the bills to hundreds. It looks so clean and so smooth. I knew how the trick works, but it still blew me away. I was like, that is so cool. And then, but I could never get it to look as smooth as that guy made it. So if you can do the switch of the bills and make it look smooth, it's a great trick to do. Uh, I love it. I do. I, I love the trick. I love watching people do it, but I could never get it to look right. So i got to keep practicing at it, I think. Maybe I'll add that into my street show. I don't know. We'll see. i got to keep practicing first now. All right, that's going to be Magician 101 for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to post your questions down below for next week. We'll give them an answer. And check out the Digital Magician of the Year contest going on right now. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I will see you next Wednesday. I pour it right inside of here, and notice that the milk... Of course, you get the, the two tubes and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the bottles. A series on my channel where every single Friday I'll be uploading a brand new video in which I'll teach you how to do an easy magic trick 